I think you're going to enjoy this video. So hello and welcome back to Top Fashion for Men. So, are you joking? I'm back in the shed. Or shed slash workshop. For me, anyway. I thought I'd let you know what I'm up to. My cuttlefish casting, still a bit ropey. Because I don't think this is the best situation for it. It's, uh, everything's a bit higgledy piggledy. So, I've adapted my ideas a little bit. A bit of an update, I guess. Still using my Sievert torch. As you can see, it's uh, this one's... Well, no, you can tell I've used it because <laughs> the end's not nice and shiny like it was, but hey, that's good. This hook is unbelievably helpful because I do use an old barbecue. There. When you're done, just hook it on there. Can't burn myself on it. I don't have to find anywhere to put it. So, yeah, that's what I do. Just keep it safe, though. I run... Whoop. I don't know if you can see this. I run the pipe all the way outside. Out, out the shed door. And you can just about... Can we just about see... The uh, propane gas tank out there. The orange one, not the blue one. That's butane for something else. So as you might be able to see... It is quite crowded in here as well. This is not the best working, ideal working situations. But you deal with what you've got. I'm doing some more casting, just not cuttlefish casting. So what am I doing? Well, in case this doesn't work, I'm not going to be too specific. Also, I don't want to give away all my secrets. Shh. But we are going to be turning you around. We are casting some more silver. And I also have an empty can of Tesco's Everyday Value Chopped Tomatoes because there is something in there which is going to be amazing. It's going to still have my whole sort of ethos, let's say, because I evolve a lot of... Evolve? Revolve. Both revolve and evolve a lot of my work around serendipity. I really like not being able to control things totally. It does mean you get quite a few failures. Well, not failures. But learning experiences. Anyway, I've managed to speak for about three minutes now without actually getting anything done. So that was a quick tip. Also, back to my Sievert torch. I have learned that this one, the little soldering one, really, really, really is only very good for soldering wire. Or for me. Maybe if I had a more controlled area, I could do slightly larger bits with it, but... I found only sort of wire, jump rings, I've only managed to do that with. I've managed to solder everything else with this big beast. You just have to be a bit careful. So I could probably do with a bit, a nozzle sort of in between those two sizes. But apart from that, it's working great. I'm, like I said, I'm still using my first gas bottle. And I've done, I don't know how many castings. Um, so yeah, I'm going to fire this up, melt some silver, see how it goes. If you follow me on Facebook and Twitter, I think I sneakily posted a picture of some silver that I did the other day. wasn't quite the same as this method. It was another method. Very similar. But hopefully I'll be able to tell you all after this. Because I can't film myself doing it. Because it takes quite a while and there's no space in here. So sorry about that. But I'll catch you up when I'm done. So I just finished my first casting, and I think it's worked really well. It smelt really bad, worse than cuttlefish. It smelt a bit like burning hair, and I know it's not mine because mine's all still there. But yeah, that 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 concoction that's in there that I cast into, interesting. But it worked, I think. So let's have a look, see at the. Casting I just got from that. There are still a few little bits in the can, but I can't fish them out just yet because I need to empty what's in there and then sort of go a bit silver, silver mining. Um, but I'm going to cast another one in there to begin with because this one came out so interesting. I've decided I want to do another one. So let's take a quick look at what I got and also compare it 
to the first casting where I did a slightly different method. So let's go see some serendipity. So here are the new castings I just did. So if I can get a bit more detail by covering up the light. There is still a bit of sand in there because as I fished them out of my pot I dropped them in the sand but I'll just clean. I'll just clean that little bit out. But look at them. This It reminds me of um, if you've ever seen Ant Hill casting. It reminds me of that a little bit which I've really wanted to try but never have. And this one's quite a nice size that maybe I could make some sort of matching earrings if I get another one. But compare this main part to the one I cast the other day. Let's see if we can get a bit of detail in there for you. Just look at the difference. Same method of casting, just casting into different things. I'm being very coy here. But yeah, just casting into different materials, let's say. Even though you're casting into the same vessel, or the same technique, you come out with two completely different shapes. This one almost looks like an octopus, like this one. Whereas this one has sort of a really rough side. And a really smooth side. It's very, very different. That one's You can almost see where the silver got poured in. And as it cooled, it curled around, whereas this one just kind of, I don't know, it's gone, it's gone really cool and strange. I like it. So I'm going to do another one and see if it comes out the same. That actually looks a bit like a uh, phoenix head or something while I'm looking at that now. But yeah, really liking how this is going. Looks like a bone there. Don't know how it's going to work with my idea though, but let's cast another one and see how it comes out. So I had a pretty good day casting. I didn't, haven't shown you after a while I was making it just yet. But that's because instead of telling you what I'm going to do, uh, this is going to be more of a teaser video. I hope you enjoy. I've taken a few videos and pictures for those of you who care. The pictures and the video were taken with my D5300, but with my old 18 to 55 lens, because that's the lens that my sort of magnifying filters, my close-up filters fit on. I haven't bought any for my new camera, uh, camera, <laughs> my new lens yet. So let me know what you think. Um, take a guess what you think I'm doing in the description down below. Remember to give me a cheeky thumbs up or thumbs down, depending how you feel. Subscribe if you want to. And let's get on with the tease. that so again leave your guesses down below in the comments what you think it is that I may be working on I think I may have given it away in the video especially one of the pieces as I have started to make that into the final piece so we're almost there hopefully in the next video I bring to you on this subject because this is all still to do with my fluidity project will be some finished pieces I'm aiming for three they're all unique all embrace serendipity all embrace fluidity and when they're fully made I will let you know what I've done so remember leave your guesses down below 
Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun and jazz. And I shall see you next time. Sparks out. I was also thinking that maybe I could put on sort of poppers, but that's, I don't like that idea as much. I kind of prefer the whole sort of like saddling type buckle idea. It looks really weird when you zoom right out, right? Don't mind, Andrew and Boogie, Boogie Kun, and my little drawings up here. But yes, video time. Sitting in front of my spotlight because it is actually night time. It's really hot. And I'm not wearing my sexy jacket anymore. Men's fashion has actually gone a bit more. Look, big old cardigan. What are you going to do about that? Anyway. Does anybody even watch these bits I stick at the end? Am I even going to put this at the end of the video? I don't know. It's just random ramblings. Random ramblings. Anyway, let's go on with the video. Zooming in. That's probably too far.